Uh, so our first species that we have in our uh, brassica section of the plots is kale. Uh, kale is quite small seeded. We uh, used the rate of uh, four pounds per acre when we did this plot. Uh, kale, uh, like most brassicas, uh, emerges and establishes quite quickly. So it's decent at, uh, at uh, uh, out-competing the weeds uh, that are in this plot. Uh, usually when we talk about kale, we're talking about a uh, uh, something that you can come in and graze uh, late fall. Uh, because it's a brassica, it's going to uh, grow during the uh, cooler periods uh, of the growing season. Uh, but when you're uh, talking about brassicas, uh, there's some special uh, pest considerations that you do need to keep in mind. So you can see here on this kale, there's a little bit of flea beetle damage on the leaves. Uh, if you have any brassicas in your crop rotation, you do want to be aware of club root. So all of your brassica cover crops will be a host for club root, and so they are not a good option for vegetable growers that have brassicas. So you can see here how there's an absence of fine root hairs. This is because one of the Delia species has likely snacked on them. And in fact, when we pulled this up, we did see a little bit of a, there was a maggot here, uh, just kind of having a little bit of lunch. And so if you have um, problems with cabbage maggot or onion maggot, or if you grow crops that are susceptible to their damage, uh, some of these brassica crops would probably not be a good option for you. So kale in our climate, uh, it will eventually winter kill. Christmas time, still green. Uh, you go back to the field in February and it does tend to winter kill on us. The next uh, crop we have here is a brown uh, mustard seed. Um, as you can see, there's, there's not a huge root to it and not a lot of biomass. So when you grow this uh, crop, you usually have pest control in mind. You're growing it for other reasons than, uh, than uh, biomass uh, production and uh, uh, maybe uh, Rosie could tell us some of the uh, pest control qualities of brown mustard. Brown mustard is a bit of a workhorse when it comes to pest management. So there's a lot of research coming out of AAFC and PEI saying that brown mustard is an effective wireworm management tool. And so some research is saying two crops back to back with brown mustard will manage your wireworm populations. Here in the Annapolis Valley we're seeing even one crop will give you uh, much better wireworm control. It's very hard to get rid of wireworms but uh, this cover crop can definitely be a tool that will certainly help your populations. Depending on uh, what research you're reading, uh, brown mustard management for effective disease and pest control is a little bit varied. So wireworms will be eating on the roots of the brown mustard and so that should be enough to give you effective control or at least a measure of control. If you're trying to control something like verticillium wilt, for example, uh, the management strategy is that you want to incorporate the entire biomass uh, quickly after you kill it. So flail mow it, plow it in, and then even roll it to really kind of cap those gases into the soil. So this has gone pretty well to uh, head uh, flower full bloom seed on us in six weeks. So you can see it's a very short term cover crop. So here we have brown mustard in uh, full bloom. Uh, you can see at the top of the plant. Uh, the bloom but down in the canopy we're already uh, setting pods and uh, we want to turn this under fairly soon uh, if we uh, let those pods develop fully we'll have viable seed in there the dormancy on some uh, uh, brassica crops is quite long and it'll be a weed for uh, many years to come flea beetle is a pest on most of your brassica cover crops so it might not be a best option for you to plant a brassica cover crop next to a cash crop that is susceptible to flea beetle damage. So our next plot is uh, Winterford uh, forage brassica. Usually again that's used as a, uh, as a uh, late fall grazer similar to kale but uh, in a cover crop situation very quickly to establish. Uh, the seed is a uh, reasonable price. Uh, very quickly to establish so it smothers out uh, weeds uh, quite well and it'll grow later into the fall as well. So this will uh, winter kill on you uh, and come spring you won't have a whole lot of residue left on the soil surface, uh, very easy to plant into. So continuing on, uh, mixed in the uh, cover crop lots is a turnip. We don't talk about turnips a lot as a cover crop but it puts on a decent root system as you can see. Uh, as we get later in season, of course, your uh, turnip will start to uh, bulk up as we get into uh, cooler temperatures in the fall. And it does put on, uh, you know, a fairly decent uh, tap root that can reach down 
break up some of that uh, shallow compaction um, in our soils. So it puts on a tremendous amount of uh, biomass, but that biomass tends to be uh, higher nitrogen breaks down fairly quickly. Um, as with the other uh, brassicas, um, you know, you have decent uh, soil erosion protection early winter, but as they winter kill and, and break down quickly, uh, it doesn't give you uh, late winter or uh, spring erosion protection the way you'd see with some of the other crops. And that's why we normally put them in a mix with some other crops that, that uh, hold on to that soil a little better during that, that period. This is the bark ant turnip. Uh, you can see it does form quite a nice taproot here. Tunneling is due to one of the Delia species, perhaps cabbage maggot. So our next species, uh, everybody's probably quite familiar with, uh, tillage radish. So tillage radish, as it's known for, puts on the big root, um, which I broke off, but it can go down quite a long ways. We're seeing a lot of uh, pest feeding on this root. Um, but it also puts on a lot of top growth. Um, in this uh, climate that we're in, in this uh, geography, a lot of guys put their tillage radish in a little bit too early. So if it's going in in uh, June, July, uh, the tillage radish uh, tends to go reproductive and we get a seed head and we don't get the big root we're looking for. Uh, as you put it in in uh, August, uh, you tend to get the root development that it's known for and uh, it goes vegetative doesn't tend to put on that seed head. So if you plant it too early, you might have to come in and mow it to control uh, seed production. Uh, this time of year, uh, winter will sit in, of course, uh, before it puts on a seed head and you'll get your till uh, tuber development that you're looking for. So we often put this in uh, a mix with another species. Uh, this uh, tends, depending on the year, to grow right up till Christmas time uh, in some areas of the Maritimes. But uh, usually by uh, New Year's, uh, we have a hard enough uh, freeze that it kills the top. So uh, you have to be a little bit careful with this, uh, especially in uh, straight uh, plantings. Uh, this could leave your soil very loose and uh, prone to uh, soil erosion if you don't combine it with the appropriate other species to uh, hold things together through uh, winter and early spring. Tillage radish is uh, a known for freeing up phosphorus, so sometimes the phosphorus in your soil is not necessarily very plant available, but tillage radish and also buckwheat are really good at accessing some of that more recalcitrant phosphorus and uh, bringing it into the plant matter, so then as that plant matter decomposes, it starts to cycle that phosphorus through the uh, nutrient cycle again. So this is really important for uh, organic farms who might have high soil phosphorus, uh, in their soil test, but we'll still sometimes see phosphorus deficiencies showing up in plant growth.